Hey, what's up you guys and welcome to episode number four of our Crypto Masterclass, a completely free training where I take you from a beginner to a pro trader and understanding cryptocurrencies. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at what is Bitcoin mining. Throughout this course, you hear me referring to Bitcoin, but most of the things that we talk about here can be applied into other cryptocurrencies as well. So Bitcoin mining is a process where people across the world connect their hardware devices to the Bitcoin network and validate transactions. Bitcoin mining is similar to traditional mining except you're not really digging on the ground for gold, however, you're providing computing power to the Bitcoin network. So Bitcoin mining is similar to traditional mining except you're not really using shovels and forklifts to dig on the ground, however, you're connecting your hardware device to the network and validate Bitcoin transactions. In traditional mining, miners are constantly looking for precious metals such as gold, silver, platinum. But in blockchains such as the Bitcoin blockchain, miners connect their hardware devices to the blockchain network and look for blocks. These hardware devices are designed with specialized graphic chips that solves a complex computational math problem. These problems are so complex they cannot be solved with an average computer. So you may be curious as to how do Bitcoin miners get paid. Bitcoin miners get paid in proportions to the work they provide. So the more computing power you have, the more likely you are to find new blocks and obviously get the rewards. Each block contains about 6.25 Bitcoin as of recording this video. To really understand how Bitcoin miners get paid, let's compare it to traditional mining. In traditional mining, miners are constantly looking for precious metals such as gold. Miners get rewarded with the amount of gold that they find while digging. That gold can then be exchanged or sold in the market for local currencies to cover the mining cost and pay employees. With Bitcoin mining, miners get paid in proportion to the computing power that they provide to the network. The more computing power you have, the most likely you are to find new blocks, which obviously will result in you being rewarded with new Bitcoins. And that's how new Bitcoins are generated and enter into the system. As of recording this video, there are about 18.7 million Bitcoins that's already in a circulating supply. Bitcoin's maximum supply is kept at 21 million Bitcoins. These are the only Bitcoins that will ever exist. Which leaves us with about 2.4 million Bitcoins still to be mined. The mining difficulty is designed in a way that the more computing power there is to the network, the more difficult it becomes to mine Bitcoin. When more miners disconnect from the network, the network will self-adjust which means it's a little bit easier for miners to find new blocks. This was designed to control the inflation and to make sure that only one block is mined in every 10 minutes. Block time is the time required to create the next block in the chain. It is essentially the amount of time it takes miners to find a solution to a hash, a random series of characters. As mentioned earlier, the more miners join the network, the more difficult it becomes to solve this problem. A hash is a fixed length alphabetical code that is used to represent words, messages and data of any length. A hash rate is referred to the total computing power that is being used to mine and process transactions on a proof-of-work blockchain such as Bitcoin blockchain and Ethereum blockchain prior to Ethereum 2.0 upgrade. Speaking of Ethereum 2.0, in our next episode, we'll take a look at what is staking and most importantly, how can you make passive income while staking in cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin halving is an event where the reward for mining new bitcoins is halved, meaning miners receive 50% fewer bitcoins for verifying transactions. This happens every four years since the invention of bitcoin. In 2009, the amount of new bitcoins issued in every 10 minutes was 50 bitcoins. In 2012, it was reduced to 25 bitcoins. In 2016, it dropped to 12.5 bitcoins. The most recent event was in May 2020 where the reward was reduced to 6.25 bitcoins. The next halving will take place in 2024, where the reward will be reduced to 3.125 bitcoins. This is all in a design structure of bitcoin and it will continue to be reduced for years to come, with the last bitcoin estimated to be mined in the year 2140. 98% of all bitcoins will be in circulation by the year 2030. So to answer the question on whether we should start mining cryptocurrencies such as bitcoin and other altcoins, well there are a lot of factors that you need to take into consideration when thinking of mining cryptocurrencies. Some of these factors include the cost associated with mining these cryptocurrencies, the maintenance cost, uh, the cost that is associated with the hardware and the electricity cost so these are the things that you need to take into consideration and obviously looking at when are you gonna break even with regards to the investment that you've made towards that mining hardware so alternatively you can look into something called cloud mining 
so what cloud mining is is just the process of renting you know the mining hardware or the mining services on the cloud so that means that you're not really responsible with you know going to purchase the hardware making sure that the, the electricity is on point and all the maintenance costs that is associated with running a mining hardware so cloud mining firms allow people to open you know mining accounts remotely and participate in bitcoin mining or other altcoins as well as much as this may sound really really good and probably lucrative as well it is very imperative to understand the risk that also comes with you know cloud mining i've already made a video here on my youtube channel i'm gonna link it towards the end of this video so keep watching but on this video basically i go over how i don't believe in cloud mining anymore when i lost a six bitcoin in cloud mining about four years ago um, the experience wasn't really good so the reason why i make these videos is that you don't make the mistakes that i've made in the past so you make you know better informed decisions moving forward so i'm sort of like against bitcoin mining and you know i always say that you rather just buy and hold the cryptocurrency for you know x amount of time and you'll make more money than going through the hassle of you know mining these currencies yourself but if you want to see how profitable mining can be you can use what is called a mining calculator and obviously i'm going to leave a link in the description so you can go and check it out yourself but basically this is how it works all right so we've got our mining calculator here but before we get into the calculations let's first look at the mining hardware we've got the enterminer s19j pro which is a 96 terahash we can see a 96 terahash with 3250 watts this model cost about 7200 us dollars and we're going to take this information and just bring it over to the mining calculator here so we've got 96 uh, terahash we're going to change that into terahashes and mining power we're going to take that to 3250 and obviously it's picking up the today's price of of bitcoin the power cost really varies from a country to country as to uh, the cost per kilowatt but some of the lowest electricity or the cheapest electricity in the world is china so we're going to put uh, those units here and obviously it starts to populate how much you make um you can see here it says per year about two thousand uh, us dollars and obviously you have to factor in the electricity cost and the maintenance cost that is associated with running the hardware itself so i mean it gives you a you know a daily profit and, and monthly profits and all that but if we look at the amount of money that we spent which is seven thousand two hundred um and obviously looking at uh the the returns that we're getting each and every year and we have to still factor in the electricity cost and all that stuff so if we take into consideration the fact that we bought this antimana s19j pro um, at 7200 this is before taxes this is before you know shipping cost um, so this price can even go beyond uh, 8000 us dollars and we looking at the amount of profits that you're making per year which is 2000 us dollars obviously you have to factor in the electricity cost and all that stuff um that's why i always say to people you know i would rather you know with my experience with when it comes to just bitcoin and bitcoin mining i'll rather just buy and hold the currency itself i mean if you bought bitcoin just about a year ago it was it was trading just under seven thousand us dollars meaning with this amount of money you would have bought you know the entire bitcoin so meaning you'll be riding this wave uh, straight to sixty thousand so you make sixty thousand dollars on 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 just your your investment for me that is more profitable looking at i could be riding this wave here with the entire bitcoin or even 1.2 bitcoins and there isn't really electricity cost or maintenance cost that i should be worried about but on the other hand if you own a mining hardware you should be you know taking all those things into consideration uh the fact that your power could be down you know depending where you are around the world so those are the things that you need to take into consideration before you're looking into bitcoin mining and obviously the network difficulty that we spoke about earlier in the next episode we're going to look at an alternative to mining which is staking on that episode we'll go in depth on everything you need to know about staking and most importantly how can you make passive income staking your cryptocurrencies so what should be the key takeaway for you from this video i believe it's the functionality of bitcoin and that bitcoin mining is an integral part of bitcoin that ensures fairness while keeping the network secured obviously you can mine other cryptocurrencies such as dash doge monero but the infrastructure is different as those currencies use a different blockchain 
but really i want us to focus on some few key points when it comes to bitcoin mining and number one is the total supply of bitcoin bitcoin is only kept to 21 million bitcoins these are only bitcoins that will ever exist now if bitcoin were to become a global currency i believe the price of bitcoin will obviously skyrocket as more and more people will want to get their hands on bitcoin but there's only 21 million bitcoins that will ever exist so the supply of bitcoin obviously in the future will become very very critical so many countries around the world right now are looking into you know adopting bitcoin so bitcoin becomes a legal currency in those countries so as more and more countries recognize bitcoin as a store value or as a currency that will strengthen the price of bitcoin moving forward if you watch until this far i really appreciate your time and if you haven't subscribed please make sure that you subscribe and smash the like button on this video if you have any questions leave them on the comment section below and i'll be there to answer them our next episode is titled what is staking i promise you you don't want to miss that one i'll see you on the next video goodbye for now peace